Uh, moving on, should parents have the right not to vaccinate their children? Today, the government, the opposition and the AMA said no. It's estimated that there are around 39,000 Aussie kids under seven who have not received any form of immunisation because their parents object. But it's a choice that will soon hit their hip pocket. It's the smart thing and it's the right thing to do to immunise your children. If they choose to, to not do that, well, the taxpayers aren't going to subsidise that choice for them. From January 2016, anti-vax parents will lose access to the childcare benefit, the childcare rebate and family tax benefit A totalling up to $15,000 per child every year. The crackdown is a tough move, but does it go far enough? For starters, it doesn't close all of the gaps. The religious exemption will continue, as will the medical exemption, but I stress the religious exemption is a very narrow exemption. The government should be aware of any new religions that suddenly crop up. In the past, there was an example of a church that was set up entirely for the purpose of avoiding vaccination. And what about those parents who are dangerously selfish and rich? There is a segment of the community where people are relatively well-educated and affluent who seem to think that they know better than the scientific and medical professions. We don't believe that the government measures will affect these people because they do not draw social security benefits. Is the next step to stop unvaccinated kids from going to our schools? or banning them from public transport. In this discussion, the children are always innocent uh, and we need to try and do the best we can for their health, their development and their education. So just how far should we go to end the threat posed by the anti-vaccination movement? Sarah LeMacquand has been at the forefront of the campaign for pro-vaccination and she joins us now. Sarah, are you happy with the no jab, no pay policy? Absolutely. This policy is very much a victory for common sense and responsibility over fear and selfishness. For the past decade, we've seen a very alarming rise in the rate of objections, and that's been driven only by misinformation and scare tactics. So this is a really important turning point, and hopefully we'll see common sense prevail once again. Well, they still have a choice not to comply, Sarah, and they may take that choice because it's money that they might resist for the sake of their principles, which I, I agree with you are misguided. But nonetheless, in what way does it benefit the kids to simply have the money taken off their parents so they get punished again when this is not really their fault in the first place? It's such a good question and it really cuts to the core of the tragedy of this whole issue. And with this policy, it would be very sad to see children denied access to money because of their parents' selfishness, but that is how society works. It's up to adults to do the right thing. We can only hope that this policy will force some people that have refused to do the right thing to have a rethink. So how much further would you go then? Well, for me personally, I think in 2015 that no child should be allowed to enrol in school unless they're vaccinated. Because parents that are taking newborn babies onto school grounds to drop off older siblings are potentially exposing those newborns to disease like whooping cough, which, as we all know, tragically can actually kill a newborn. So I think that it would be great that if you don't immunise your child, then you can't enrol in a school. All this talk about their rights uh, really just makes me angry, quite frankly, Sarah. I mean, you don't have the right to harm other people, and why shouldn't we make it illegal? It's illegal not to send your child to school, and yet it's not illegal to leave them open to diseases which could kill them and kill other people who they come in contact with. Why don't we just say, you know what? No, you have to get immunised. It's the law. Well, I, I obviously completely agree with that. And I, I, I think there is a real danger in justifying dangerous decisions on the grounds of personal belief or saying that you're doing it out of love, which is an argument that we've heard recently. There's been lots of really dangerous and regressive behaviour in human history that's been justified on those very grounds. We as a society say that's not good enough, and I think we now need to extend that approach to something like this. Well, we really appreciate you speaking to us about it, Sarah. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. I'm pro-vaccination, yeah. um, but this just doesn't sit... There's something about this that just doesn't sit right with me. I, I just get the feeling that this might further harden the attitudes and the beliefs of the anti-vaxxers, and I yeah. feel like there's a lot of anger and and force around this. And as Sarah even said in the first response, that there's selfishness, which I agree, mm -hmm. but there's fear. 
But there's, but for one thing, you don't just have the law for the kids, and I agree with Waleed, it is terrible that these kids are suffering because of their parents' idiocy, mm. but it's not just about protecting those kids. The government has to protect all the other kids who could potentially be exposed to these awful diseases, which really we should have given, you know, given the flick in the 19th century. Oh, and, yeah, and, absolutely. And the other thing is, I, I don't understand, this, this debate becomes so emotive about, uh, you know, people's rights or freedom of choice. No one talks that way about, for example, you know, the law that says you have to give your child an education, you have to take your child to school. Now, we have kids who are truant, we have kids that don't go to school. We don't say then, oh, well, we're not going to make it the law to go to school because some kids aren't going to school. Yeah, I, and yet we have that about something that could, I, you know, I, I kill them I take your all. point, and I understand the idea of government force might be necessary sometimes. The question for me is would this even work? And that's mm -hmm. where I'm a little bit unsure, but we'll have to see. Mm -hmm.